don't know how this happens every time. It's like every time we have a convertible or a car with no top, like yeah, the, it's a bad day. Like the slingshot, it's always a gross day. Like the Miata, it was freezing. The slingshot, it was freezing. The 488 Spider was roasting hot. Every single and day. Now, now today, it's, yeah. it's cold again. Every day, it's, we just have bad luck. And yesterday it was 80 degrees. And we didn't do it we yesterday. We didn't shoot yesterday. We decided to shoot today. Well, it's our own fault. Welcome everybody to another special episode of Grand Test Auto. Yes. Today we are reviewing a 2020 BMW M4 convertible. And it's a good car. You know why it's a good car? Because it's my car. That's right. This, Joe Dunn picked up a nice little BMW. This is my new, new, new car. I'm excited. So you got your Golf. I got my Golf and now I have my M4. You and have, I am satisfied. You have gone full <laughs> German on us. Uh, yes, I'm full German right now. All right. Well, this one is super exciting for me because I have never driven or even been inside a manual BMW before. Yep. I think the majority of BMWs, especially M series cars, are not manual. Yes. It's very uncommon. Yeah. I specifically wanted a uh, hardtop convertible with a manual transmission. Yeah. And the only brand new one that I feel like I could find was either this or the Miata. Wow. That's about it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it makes sense. Like this and the Miata RF, I think are the only hardtop convertibles you can get that come with a manual transmission. What about I might be wrong. Mustang GT, right? It's not hardtop. They don't have a hardtop? Nope. Soft top. Whack. Yeah. Anyway, good choice. Definitely a more expensive car. It's more expensive. But I mean, it, yeah. realistically, it's a better car. It's, it's a better car, yeah. This car has an inline six cylinder, 444 horsepower. Zero to 60 time is rated at 4.4 seconds. That's a lot of fours. Let's see what we can do here. Pulls. 60. There's 60. That's I, nice. That, feel, that feels about 4.4 seconds. I'd say so. Four and a half seconds or so. This is yeah. a German muscle car. Yeah. That's like pretty much how I describe it. German muscle car. It's very engaging and it's not, I mean, depending on who's driving, obviously it's going to be smoother or rougher, but even with the smooth shifts, like you do it accurately, you still have a little bit of a jolt. Like, yeah, when like it catches, right it's not, you're not being slammed forward or back. But you know when it catches the next gear. Yeah. That's nice. Now, let me say, I've said before, I do think all BMWs look the same. Honestly, even as somebody who owns this car, I don't think I could tell the difference between this and an M3 yeah. or an M5. Totally agree. Like, I know, like, an M5 has, like, different, like four doors, mm -hmm. I believe. And there's, like, the M8, the mates. Eh. I would say, yeah, I'm not generally a fan of blue on cars believe it or not what but Both i like cars are blue. i know but I, I like it on the golf i like it on this yeah i like it on the rs most of the time sometimes i'm yeah. like that's a little annoying most of the time wow. i just think like that truck it's blue so eh. i own two out of three cars that you that, like that are on, acceptable and that blue. are acceptable in <laughs> <Yeah>. blue <laughs> This car is pretty much loaded out with options, and that's kind of the obnoxious thing when you buy a BMW. Yep. Um, there's just option after option after option after option. So this is not like the base M4. Uh, the base M4 starts at $77,650. So fully, fully spec'd out, it can push into the low six figures. Wow. Like you can push into like a hundred to one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Okay. Which for an M4, in my opinion, is kind of stupid. Yeah. If you're like in like a hundred and five and one hundred and ten thousand dollar money, you're in Nissan GTR and Porsche 911 territory. Yeah. Even if you wanted to stretch a little like, bit more, you could go for an Aston. Yeah, or I mean, you could get a used Acura NSX yeah. for like 120, 130. I've seen them for. So yeah. like, depends on what you're after. I think for like the around like seventy seven thousand dollars to like the ninety thousand dollars, which is around where this is spec'd to, mm -hmm. um, I think that's fine. Uh, All right, so let's, I got it. What does that twenty grand get you? Okay, so that gets you the ceramic brake cal, the carbon ceramic brake calipers, okay. which I have. It gets you this like nice carbon fiber trim. 
it raises the speed limit to 177 miles per hour. Wow, it raises the roads you drive on speed limit to 177 miles yep. per hour. So normally you, you literally have to pay to disengage the electronic limiter because <laughs> normally the speed limit, the max speed limit is like 150 and you can pay like, I forgot how much it was, it's maybe like $1,000 or so for an option. You just that need that extra up, 20 miles per yeah, hour. Yeah, to go 20 miles an hour faster. Oh, the neck warmers was also an option. That's, that's a nice touch. That's like a five hundred dollar option. Oh, for, totally worth it for neck warmers. And I think yeah, that's that's worth it. That's worth five hundred. Especially bucks. if you live somewhere cold, like driving to work on a cold morning and just being able to turn on a neck warmer. Lovely. Yeah, it's so lovely. It's like a dry shower. It's just great. It's I got this in this orange, like brown leather interior, which I love. I think it matches perfectly with the blue exterior. Mm -hmm. uh, just like, um, I don't know, blue and orange, I think combine really, really well together. Yep. Um, Statistically or scientifically, that is the most appealing color combination is blue and orange. Really? Or yellow and, and yellow and blue, depending well, on who you ask. How about that? Yeah. Sitting in this versus sitting in the Rolls Royce, I don't think if you sat in both side by side, you'd be able to say, yeah, the Rolls Royce is worth $300,000 more. Yeah, I, there's no way you could do that. So like this, the Rolls Royce was nice, yeah. obviously, but this feels 95% the same thing. Yeah. Like, and we'd have to see whether you took it on a three hour trip, whether you'd be as comfortable in this over that time as the Rolls Royce. But at that point, I don't think it really matters. I don't think, like, it, yeah, I don't think that matters. You're not really that road much. tripping either of them. Yeah, I mean, right. You could, they're I mean, both capable of this. It, this, I would argue, is kind of a GT car. Yeah. Uh, I, I definitely would argue this is a Grand Tourer. What's the center console like? V small. Oh, that's really tiny. That's V small. That is like a tray. It really is. There. I mean, you could you could fit one Wendy's cheeseburger vertically here. You could fit one here, squeeze another in here, and maybe stack another one right here. So you've got three, three Wendy's cheeseburgers, plus your little USB port in there. Yep. That is a, frankly, very disappointing. That is center console. Pretty sad. Glove box. How's glove box space? Pretty good, honestly. Pretty good. Um, this is larger than I thought. Larger than, um, larger than the Rolls Royce. Oh man, we're just trashing the Rolls Royce in this video. Sorry, Rolls. I mean, this car is like less than a quarter of the price of yeah. a Rolls Royce Ray. That's <laughs> insane. The carbon so. fiber is really nice. It feels more solid than carbon fiber I've touched in other cars. It feels like it's got some substance to it. Like if you punch it, it's not gonna crack. I, I agree with that. I was about to say something that I think is going to be quite controversial. If, the, if this and the Rolls Royce was the same price, okay? If they were identical price, I would still take this. Yeah. I would take this over the Rolls Royce. I think I would too. I haven't driven it, but this. It's just I'm more fun. The Rolls. This seems like it's more responsive. It's more fun. Yeah, this is more fun to drive. And on top of that, it's pretty fun being a passenger in too, like the Rolls Royce. Yeah. It's comfy. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> As per usual, I think I was a little bit more aggressive than Joe was. Yeah, there. definitely. You're always more aggressive. <laughs> I'm than sorry. I am. I'm always like a little more like a little ginger. Just a little more cautious. Yeah. Always. That is fun. It's yeah. Very fun. It's responsive. It doesn't suffer from like I don't know sticky clutch syndrome, which I feel like a lot of modern cars have a real light, soft clutch that just feels like it gets stuck at the bottom. This one kicks back up just like I like it to. Yeah. Um, it feels more mechanical, more engaging. Yeah. And the shifter is pretty notchy. The MPG is 17 city and 25 highway for combined 20 MPG. And that's a bit of an oof. Bit of an oof. Also, further for practicality reasons, I should specify that the trunk is pathetically small <laughs> because most of the roof, when uh, you retract the top, goes into the trunk. So the trunk space is laughably tiny. Oh yeah. But if you have the trunk up, it's actually not so bad. It's actually like an average trunk. Comfort mode, sport mode, and sport plus mode. What are we in now? We're in sport. Okay, cool. So sport, we've always been in sport for this whole review. Yeah. Sport plus makes it just like a little more intense, uh, tightens up the suspension a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's cool is you can actually go into the uh, like the driving diagnostics uh, in the car and you can adjust the settings and you, you can create a custom drive oh, setting. Oh, that's nice. Where you can like adjust the suspension and you can like do all kinds of like crazy things. That's nice. I like being able to tune your car 
a little bit just the, to the way you just like to, it. Yeah, just to not, the way you like it. It doesn't have it. to be crazy, but just a little bit of a nice combo like that. Like, just, I don't want the suspension to be that stiff. You can keep right. it a little bit looser. Just a, nice. Just a little crazy. All right, so the back seats also are uh, pretty spacious, in my opinion. Spacious for people our size. Spacious for people our size. Yeah, I should clarify again. Like We're like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, yeah. thereabouts. So it is spacious for us. If you are over six feet tall, it's probably not. That's a little cramped. I mean, obviously with the with the top down, you're going to be just fine. But uh, but I say this because a lot of sports cars, the back seats are jokes. Yeah. Like they're like unusable by adults. The back seats on this are genuinely usable. Mm -hmm. Like a, a, a grown adult could actually sit back there and use them, especially with the top down. You have unlimited headroom. I like that. This is Joe. What? This is the ultimate driving machine. Ah, uh, <laughs> get out of town. Thanks, BMW. You did it, BMW. BMW's Yo, logo. Uh, hire us to do your commercials. Yo, I'll, yep. I'll go to Germany we'll if be, you like. We'll be your Matthew. For me. We'll be your Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Like, we're from Texas. Yeah, we're from Texas. Matthew McConaughey's from Texas. <laughs> we're, like, we're qualified. That's a big wiener schnitzel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I can respect that. I can respect that. <laughs> I still take the long way. <laughs> All right. So, starting us out is performance. Uh, I think it's high scores. I do too. I'm going to give this thing. Ooh, I'm going to give it an eight. You can get faster cars, you can get cars with even better handling, but this is way more than the average person would ever need. I would give it not quite an eight, honestly. Um, I'm gonna give it a seven. That's fair. Just cause like there's cars that are faster, there's cars that handle better. Practicality, it's like, uh, uh, like not, <laughs> not, not, not the greatest. It's not terrible. Uh, Space in here in the center console, abysmal. Okay. Glove box, okay. But it does have usable back seats. Yes. I would give this a Four. Because I think I think it's below average, but I don't think it's horrible. I was gonna say also it's it's below average. I think I'm gonna give it a four and uh, no, no, I'm gonna give it a four. The only connector it has, as far as I can tell, is the one USB in this very very small center console. Value is next. Um, it is seventy seven thousand dollars, seventy seven thousand six hundred dollars base. With options, this is in the nineties, and then with more options, you could push this into the low hundreds. I'm gonna say. You can absolutely live without the options in a car like this. Yeah, I will say also, I realize, okay, I bought this car new and I know that depreciation is gonna be pretty brutal on this. Yeah. I accept that, I know it. I know that uh, in five years time, this car will probably lose 60 Like maybe half its value, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I was a neutral third party reviewing this, I'd give it a five and a half yeah. on value. I, it's not that great, <laughs> honestly. At 77,000, that's pricey, but it, it's still not as much as some of the other performance cars in the same vein. Yeah. And most people don't need a 911. So. Yeah. It was more practical than a 911. Gonna, yeah, exactly. Like, so I, so. Just for that, I'm going to give it a six because it is, I think, a more responsible choice for the average person than something like a 911. Oh, okay, yeah. Next up is Cool Factor, which uh, I think is pretty pretty good yeah um, so it's not like super flashy and it doesn't attract like a ton of attention um, I mean no one's been walking out but even if there were I don't think anybody would be like well like no one really looks you at might this. have someone give you a thumbs up I appreciate yeah. it yeah I've driven this around like quite a bit in the last few days that I've owned this for and no one's really like yeah. oh my god an M4, an M4. Like, I'm gonna give it a six all right just a smidge higher than than average I think I'd also uh, I hate that we don't we disagree do on this because we need to disagree more dang it yeah but I do also want to give it a six because like I think like yeah it's kind of cool but like not like whoa all right next up is quality which I think is extremely high yeah it's real high um the interior like just nothing in this feels cheap um the cabin feels expensive I, I know obviously with BMW's long-term reliability is questionable at best yeah so quality is probably not like super great but I mean just like the, the way it feels and the way this yeah. is built this car feels like a tank yeah driving it it feels very well built feels very well put together it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart it feels like heavy, um, it's gonna be yeah, very and heavy precise. and planted and precise yeah for sure I would give it 
An eight. Dang it. On quality. What were you thinking? An eight yeah. two. I'll be down for an eight. Eight two. I almost jumped in so I said so I could say eight first. <laughs> Should have done it. And the final thing which I'm gonna rate very highly on this is the fun factor. Me too. Which I think is fabulous. The manual transmission, in my opinion, is the way to go if you're getting an M car. Yeah. Uh, it's just more fun, it's more engaging than the automatic. And it's good. And it's just it's good. good. I'm gonna give it an eight and a half. I was gonna give it a nine Nice. on fun factor. Like, I really think it deserves that. And the average score is a 40 out of 60. Ah, uh, 40 on the dot. 40 exactly on the dot. I like it. Which I think it absolutely earns. It's just so much fun. It's so engaging. I say, I know I've said that a lot this episode, but this is one of the yeah. most engaging cars I've ever driven. Yeah, that's the word. That's the word for this video. Yeah. Engaging German muscle car convertible. That's a lot of good words right Amazing. there. Amazing. Yeah. All right, gang. Well, that is the review of the 2020 BMW M4 with the lovely blue and the lovely orange and the manual transmission. Mm -hmm. It's a truly special car. Very, very special. I don't want to give this one back to you. I think you're just <laughs> going to be my captive for the day. Well, you can always drive it again. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. If it's your first time, thanks for stopping by. We hope you'll check out a couple more of our episodes. We'll see you guys in the next one. Yep, see you guys. You know, sometimes when I've had a bad day or I'm just really stressed, I like to come out to my car and just watch Curiosity Stream. <clears throat> really relaxing, you know? Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service for people who actually like to learn stuff. They have thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. If you like our show, you'll love their speed category. It's got a ton of content on cars and other things that go fast. We've recently partnered with Curiosity Stream to help build Nebula, our new streaming service. Nebula is a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators. Because we all appreciate how supportive our fans are, Curiosity Stream is offering a free Nebula subscription with every purchase of a year-long Curiosity Stream membership. With this bundle, you get the best of both worlds. Curiosity Stream is home to high production value documentaries and nonfiction work, whereas Nebula is a place for educational YouTubers to try new things and experiment with different formats, things the YouTube algorithm would punish us for. Curiosity Stream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so they're offering Grand Test Auto fans free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com GTA. When you sign up for Curiosity Stream, you get instant access to thousands of nonfiction titles, and you'll get to watch a bunch of new episodes from Grand Test Auto months before they hit YouTube, plus lots of other great Nebula originals. By signing up for Curiosity Stream, you'll be helping not only GTA, but the entire educational community, as we work together to build a place where we can create exciting new content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give it a try by signing up using the link below. We promise you'll love it.